Gareth, hey, uh, thank you for coming back on the show. It's um, it's great to have you here, and it's good to do a follow up. I want to do more of these on the on the Been Talking with Peak Performers show, and and uh, yeah, the, the reason it's we- also be here, Tim. Thanks so yeah. much for the warm welcome. Yeah, anytime. Um, the reason we've got you back on is, excitingly enough, you're heading over to the World Economic Forum. I've uh, been invited there, and uh, and you're going to be doing some speaking and, and some interviews over over there. Yeah, but um, look, for people who didn't watch the episode last time around, let's just give a bit of introduction into who you are and, and what you sure. do. You, you've got some lawyer experience, but yeah, you're also an educator. Sure. Yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm a speaker, uh, a presenter, an educator. Um, and an entrepreneur. Um, my background is law. I'm an intellectual property lawyer and I've been maintained a practice since about 2010, helping support startup and, and great Australian ideas. Um, those interests have uh, merged also into education. I'm running a number of IP workshops this year. In fact, we want to run 50 in the uh, Melbourne and, and Australia startup ecosystem, a small, medium business enterprise. Uh, but fundamentally, what I'm about, Tim, is the bridge between education and business, the relationship between them. And that has been the culmination of a number of activities over a number of years. However, essentially, that's what I'm passionate about, mm-hmm. the connect or disconnect between education and industry and business. Yeah, definitely. And and it's a contentual problem or discussion, I'd like to say, not not from discussion, is is that that bridge between the two. Something I think you put up um a while ago, a status where you said uh, the future of business is in education. So yeah, could you right. could you expand on that? Paul? Yeah. Well, the future uh you know, the future of education needs work. Um and we all need education to embrace the enormous change that we're seeing in the world right now. No longer is the future some point in the distant future where disruption um, is happening. Disruption is happening to our world right now. We have just come off the back of bushfires. Yes, bushfires. I pointed the phone because it's so to cut the bushfires, but yeah, well, technology. All these things are coming together all at once. We have environmental threats, you know, the raging bushfires in Australia, which is getting worldwide recognition. We have technology, as you just mentioned. The smartphones have been with us since 2009. No, it's basically, you know, a greater proportion of the world have a computer that is stronger than the computers that took the Apollo spaceship to the moon. And on top of that, we have our workplace being changed fundamentally by something that is not new but has been with us for 27 years, otherwise known as the internet or the information superhighway. 27 years ago, everything changed. However, our thinking has been predominantly around what's known as the third industrial revolution. It's for a, a lot, it's so last century, it's not funny. I see. And that's what World yes. Economic Forum talks about the fourth industrial revolution. Professor Klaus Schmidt, who is the president of the World Economic Forum, has been speaking about these changes to our political, to our social, to our work, and our education landscape for a few years now. And this is where my passion between education and work comes from. It needs to change because we are in a much denied fourth industrial revolution due to the power of the internet. So what are the discussions that Professor uh, Klaus, you said? Um, yeah, what, Professor what, what, Klaus Schmidt. Basically, Klaus he wrote a book in 2015 called The Fourth Industrial Revolution. And really, he foreshadowed the next 15 years of changes that will undeniably happen to society. Now, this is with great authority because he founded the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland in 1971. And it was a forum for leaders, world leaders, who come together in the political, education, and business community to discuss business and the economy. 
of the world. So he's been focusing on this, and the forum's been focusing on this for at least five years because they've known it's coming. And therefore, the focus on this is really important for us as Australians to understand because here we are in a privileged country undergoing, uh, undergoing enormous stress at the moment from an environmental point of view. However, the other impact to this, particularly on jobs and education is enormous. And this is why I'm going to form. And this is why I've also written a book that I'll be released in March this year about these projects as it Fantastic. pertains to Fantastic. So, so we're talking about the bridge of, of education. The conversation that we had last time on the show was um, figuring out how you can bridge that gap between theory, practice, and the, and, and the industry. So, yeah. so combining all of the two, because myself, it, it, in context here, I've graduated my marketing degree now. I was two units off from finishing when we talked and, and because of the sure. amazing teachers that I had, amazing lecturers that I had, um, we, we've discussed yeah some some of my the personal things that have gone in, on in my life. But but I had some real support in, through my degree, uh, and and some real passionate teachers. So I was lucky. Yeah. I I got sure. um, in in the the units that I did, especially the final capstone ones. My fundamental education through my marketing degree has yeah. given me the passion. For, for what I love doing has given me the foundational knowledge. But what I also did was I then saw, okay, well, digital marketing is changing every day. So for, for, for someone, you, you, can't teach, you can't teach TikTok, right? Because if you go and teach TikTok, then something else comes along and it's out, outdated. So, so you need to also then combine um, essentially outside education with your fundamental university so i'll come back to the, the question there where i said so we're bridging this gap how do we add how do we add into education the uh theory that we need because you're an intellectual property lawyer by by trade so you, you needed theory um and then how do we maybe add in some more practicality so the industry can can adapt and change what what's your Great opinion question. Yeah, look, and, and look, one of the reasons I love, uh, you know, being with me talking and speaking with you about these issues is that you really reflect the target demographic of who I'm most concerned about. The 9.1 million Australians who are, have just are finishing or have, are in education presently. They are inheriting a world full of pitfalls for graduating and getting a job. I mean, if education is not to get a job, then what else should it be for? I'll ask to answer that by saying empowerment. If education is not empowering you, then what's the point? Now, to answer the question, the digital divide, which is a, a real characteristic of this fourth industrial revolution, is not being addressed in university fundamentally. And I know this as a lecturer. I know this as a recent student. It was only... Uh, 15 years ago that I graduated. However, what's most important is that that education system is not nurturing uh, and building bridges for this future world of work. And that's why I'm so passionate about this issue. Yeah, and I, and I, know, that, I know they're trying. That's, that's the thing that's good is, is I, I think it, we've finally got sure. to, a, to a point where um, at least the institutions that I talk to know mm -hmm. that okay we need we we need to understand technology is adapting we need to understand that um students have different ways of learning and, and everything and even even to a core level at primary school so my partner's a, a primary school teacher she's sure. um that just graduated her, her degree and a lot of her learning was how do you look at students not as a mass production line but as individuals and, and sure. oh, I'm so glad you raised that because one of our exciting initiatives this year is actually uh, been around a business, a social enterprise that's been around since 2018 called Green and Gold Education. And what Green and Gold Education is about is really about nurturing a sense of purpose and individual identity within the education process. 
We know, history tells it. Um, Sir Ken Robinson, a very famous TED book, which is uh, over a decade old, Ken Robinson actually talks about how the, in the second industrial revolution informed the school system, and not much has changed since, whether it's the bells and whistle of primary schools through to the faculty orientation of university, all of this education system has been manufactured for a production line that no longer exists because the internet has changed our point of distribution and our education system needs to reflect that. Hmm. Not only through digital application skill set, but also the simple fact that is actually important by the foundation of young Australians. Your age group and those younger than you, only in the next, you know, five years, ten years, and going on, will have seventeen different jobs over five different careers. So, therefore, a university degree of three years is no longer going to cut it because. By the time you finish that degree, the world and industry will have changed. Hmm. And uh, I, I, yeah, I agree. I, I I agree. I I also want to sort of throw in the uh, sure. the, the role of, of a university is twofold. One is right. to to gather information. So mm -hmm. so ga gather information, disseminate information. They do that through research, and then the second is to teach that information so either through lectures through education through different platforms and i think in order to have a graduate that's successful over those three years you can't teach them a particular tactic that may be here two or three years down the road you need to give them that broad foundation so that then they can adapt it i'll, I'll explain in context so I realized that I needed to increase my education on digital marketing, SEO, Google AdWords, Facebook ads, Instagram ads. These things change on a monthly, daily basis because of the algorithmic changes on, on social media. But I understand how to run an effective Facebook ad because I understand consumer behavior. I understand... Um, why people make decisions. I understand the research process. I learned that through university, but I learned the up-to-date skill by doing it myself. And I feel like that's what you're trying to do with Green and Gold Education is it's that supplementary section it where yeah. we, need that, we need that thing that is changing on a monthly, daily basis. Is that true? Sure, yeah. Well, well the fundamental... Uh, offering of green enrolled and education is supplementing our current education uh, at vocational and higher education level to mm. assist students gain meaningful employment opportunities in this digital age. Uh, that's our focus, digital marketing, actually. We should be speaking to them. Maybe you'd be a, uh, you'd be a great person to be involved in our uh, apprenticeship program, which is yeah. launching. We need uh, teachers. I'm, uh... in, yeah. Well, look, the reason that I, I, it's, it's important, supplementing is, is really the best way. It's the bridge between education and industry. We are building bridges in, towards digital jobs. And the way that we're doing that, yes, is about getting up-to-date information. Um, one of the associations, that, one associations we've had, a, I've had for many years now, actually since 2017 when I became a teacher, um, I was teaching a diploma of social media marketing run by Social Media College. Jonathan and Danielle Tanner are both forward-thinking individuals who have created curriculum based on the needs of uh, a huge uh, part of our industry now, which is social media marketing. Every business, small, medium, or large, needs to be engaging. It's what Google calls the zero moment of truth. If your business is not on Google, you are not being found. And social media is just one of the ways to go out and reach it. They have developed a diploma a one-year diploma, and they acknowledge and work very hard to consistently, semester, term by term, update that curriculum. And that's an indication of the way that we're going. Our focus is actually about the fact that we have a program 
that is eight weeks in duration. And basically, students are vetted at the very, very beginning for who they are and what their individual needs are based on a sense of purpose. Our focus is that we want students to bring their why to work and therefore, while there is enormous opportunity in digital, we will supplement the education of vocational and higher education. Cornerstone with around three gold stars based around people. And really, this is the bridge between education and work. Apprenticeships are not new. Let's just take a step back in time. 100 years ago, we're here in, um, in Melbourne, and then in just 20 minutes north of the city, there's a vibrant education centre called the Brunswick Technical School. Tech, tech school is what we grew up with. If you didn't go to higher ed or a high school, you went to get a trade. And quite simply, what we need right now is digital trade. And we are set up at the Brunswick Business Incubator, a trade school, to give and equip you and your friends, your colleagues, the skills of the trade to get a job within eight weeks. Okay, so that's what we're working. Um, we've actually been operating since 2018. We ran two programs last year, and our most recent partners are the Victorian State Government, um, particularly uh, Kelly uh, from the Digital uh, Innovation Festival. Um, we have also the support of Trinity College in the University of Melbourne, and we are running uh, our official uh, program. Uh, from March, April. Okay, so we are seeking connect students with employers, small to medium enterprises, and some same positions offered through our recruitment partners, which include Hayes Recruitment. Um, but basically, we run an eight-week program where students work on a live digital marketing campaign uh, that is connected to a student based on their sense of purpose, and they are paid doing it in a digital media marketing role, working for a business. The outcome of this is that after eight weeks, they will have delivered a three-week campaign for a business and then will we'll earn themselves the right and interview for a potential job with that employee. What I love... Basis what I, between green and gold, yeah. What I love about this is... You see this happen where somebody will focus very hard on their studies and they get the best grades, right? They're the smartest person out there, right? But they haven't done anything else, right? So you go to a businessman who's going to hire you for a role and they ask you, what have you done? Mm. Like, yeah, you, your grades are good and you can learn. That, that's, I know you're smart. Good. What have you done? You haven't earned the right for that interview until you've got an experience. And yes, there's the counterproductive, there's the counter argument that says, okay, how do I get experience if you, you know, if you can't give me the job and I can't get experience, how do I get experience? What you're doing there is you're talking about the bridge, you're giving them that experience and then they can. That's right. Yeah, they earn themselves a portfolio. Um, and not a, not even that a relationship on a live uh, a live um, campaign that is run on behalf of the employer and overseen by our enterprise managers, all of which have a strong background in digital and in education. And basically, they oversee the project on behalf of the employer on um, as small to medium enterprise, and is, yeah, the student is nurtured through and gains really meaningful experience. We work with that student in the first four weeks on three core gold stars, okay? There are three gold stars to get from green to gold, okay? And these are attitude over aptitude, okay? So it is acknowledged that most 18 to 26-year-olds now have grown up as digital natives. So therefore, they have an ability to already use it, okay? And uh, use the power of social media to a degree. They just don't know how to apply it to business. That's what we teach them. That That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Problem solving skills. This is the second part. Is like if you don't know it, that's okay, but you need to 
have an attitude that wants to know. And that attitude is an expectation. Come with a problem-solving attitude. Come with a problem-solving attitude. Come with a problem-solving attitude or don't come. (laughs) And that's really fundamental to this third and most important feature, which is what the foundation of the understanding sees as the biggest gap. Communication and confidence. Okay. Soft skills. Soft skills. We like to call them enterprise skills because they build the bridge. The first and second gold star leads to the third. And that's how you grow with us from green to gold. Yeah. Can I just touch on the, the first point there? Um, because you did say it. You said um, they've grown up with digital, with tech, so they're, they're native to it. But they don't understand the business context of it. So something that really annoys me in, in the marketing field at the moment is you'll get someone that, okay, I know how to post on Facebook. They'll go and do some online course just to, you know, one of, from one of the gurus. Mm. And then they'll claim that they're a marketer and they can get results for you mm. without actually then having that understanding that you're talking about. They'll do this course and they'll say, I can get all these sales for you but then there's no results. And that really I've heard annoys this me. Situation. Yeah, it- and uh, it's very prevalent in the early days, you know, um, lots of promises and lack of delivery. I mean, there's a number of different reasons for that. There are people and individuals out there that, that prey on those with a lack of knowledge. Um, however, also I could, I don't want to issue, there's no blame because there's no wrong or right in anything. Well, there is there is no wrong or right when it when it comes to empowering people with skill. You either have to take your own responsibility, but the institutions that offer also have a responsibility to teach business skills because conducting yourself in business is something that is only learned after your education. I can tell you from my own experience, it took me years as a lawyer, it took me years as a small business owner to learn the rhythm of a transaction, to learn about offer and acceptance, even though my legal background, to learn how to invoice, to learn how to conduct myself, to learn how to project manage. These are the kinds of things we're interested in teaching, acknowledging that only three core skills are required to grow from the end of goal. And fundamentally, we believe that students and individuals that are bringing their why to work and operating for sense of purpose make for happier employees, make for happier, more engaged workforce and are more likely to succeed in their chosen role because they're not just getting a job for the sake of getting a job, they're getting a job because it's congruent with their sense of purpose. I want to to end here. The, The theory makes sense once you put it into practice. Totally. Well, these are some of our results um, so far. I have seen... Yeah, you worked with CUB. Yeah. 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 You've, seen, you've seen some of my students. Uh, my students, when I was lecturing the point of social media marketing, were getting jobs off the classroom floor because the curriculum of the social media college is really based around running live campaigns. And part of the assessment class was to do... A Approach your employer. So our international students, who I'm very passionate about. I was this month, exactly 25 years since I was an international student. And now I'm teaching them. And so I understand their needs. They're here to identify. And they are working 20 hours a week, sometimes in jobs that are not glamorous. Strands will not do, you know, hospitality or cleaning. And in most cases, these students are able to um, approach their boss, run a social media campaign, demonstrate their success, and in every case that you see on the green and gold website, they have secured a job. That they've moved from the barrister, pulling a coffee barrister, to a social media manager of a small restaurant or a cafe. Or in one case, uh, one of the students actually got a job in Hobart on the way to PR, and her campaign was featured by news uh, ad week in New York by Carlton United Broadway. Okay, so 
under our supervision, these are the kinds of results we have already achieved. These are the practical results. And what we are moving with training goals is to formalize that process, both with employers as well as students. Our focus is actually to engage uh, and have meaningful dialogue with businesses, our business community now, about how we can embrace um, an apprentice you know, from, from our pool of graduates um, and really work with them on a live campaign, a live project in digital to help build that bridge. And I think most of the employers will be pleasantly surprised what the cost of that would be when they would ordinarily be going to an ad agency or a large company paying far more, but having an opportunity to uh, really have that, you know, find an employee, motivated future job employee, carry their business into the next chapter of the digital mm-hmm. Yeah, rather than I, I did this, rather than yeah, getting in the circle. <laughs> um, yeah, I think sure. I think <laughs> I think it's a really awesome place to leave it. Actually, um, okay. but I want to end on on two more questions. Um, sure. The first one being, uh, what's up for you next? What's what are you, sure. you know, in the next two okay. two months? What are you just yeah. very yeah. briefly, so very we briefly. can we can yeah. keep in touch and and I can say, hey, how's that thing going? Sure, Tim. No, listen, thanks for asking and thanks for having me on your show today. Um, basically, I'm very excited. I'm returning to Germany 25 years since I was an international student. Um, I'm heading back to Germany um, to see my host families um, and catch up with them. Obviously, on the way through, I am going to the World Economic Forum to finish my book. Um, I've got a number of interviews planned um, you know, with senior political uh, education and business leaders. Finish that off launching at RMIT later in the year. And finally, of course, my focus um, is uh, about running our apprenticeship program through green and gold education. Uh, and these are the things that we're looking to make a big impact in 2020, a change of a decade. And we're looking forward to being that strong bridge between education and business. Fantastic. So, and if anyone's heard anything <clears throat> on this show that they want to reach out to you. They want to have a discussion. Um, sure. They're keen to look at green, um, green and gold education. Where, where do you want, where do you want people to contact you? Okay. If, if that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. Basically you can reach out through social media. We are you're, available. You're active there. You're very active there. Day, sometimes more. <laughs> um, but we're really interested in speaking with employers, um, small to medium sized interview uh, enterprises. We're talking about small business. We're talking about cafes, restaurants, um, we're talking about service-based industry, business to business. We're interested in um, uh, running a digital media project or marketing campaign. We encourage you to connect uh, uh, through greenandgoldeducation.com or greengold.com uh, or, and or any of our social media channels. Um, basically, uh, you can contact me and be very interested to have a chat with one of our candidates. Uh, we can actually source a digital future ready crowd and work on a live campaign um, that takes uh, eight weeks to deliver. Looking forward to yeah, chatting. Fantastic. Here. Fantastic. Well, Gareth, um, I've been Tim, you've been Gareth, and we've been talking. Thank you again for, for coming on the show. Together we are green and gold. And uh, <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure, Tim, and wishing you all the very best for a purposeful and prosperous 2020. That's it. Cheers.